Hello, good morning, everybody. We are just going to let people in for the next minute or two. Um, welcome to the session today. Um, if you could, uh, while we're letting everybody in, just comment in the chat with your name and the organization you're joining us from, uh, or if you're freelance, that would be fab. Um, if you could also mute yourselves, that would be great just to avoid any um, disruption. Um, we will have moments where we welcome interaction, of course, uh, but just for the sound, it'd be great. Amazing. I can see that everybody's already done that. So thank you very much. Amazing. Hi. Lovely. Some new um, names, some familiar names. Always great to see you all. That's my cat <laughs> saying hello. <laughs> um, she might disrupt the session today, but we shall see. Hopefully not. Um, hi, everybody. Um, I was just saying um, welcome. Um, we're just going to let everybody join for the next minute. If you could all just comment with your name um, and the organization you're joining us from, uh, then, yeah, we can get a sense of who's here today. Amazing. Um, a couple of clients in here as well, which is always nice to see. So thank you for joining us. Um, and again, if you're just joining us, please do mute yourselves uh, just to avoid any distraction for the time being. That would be much appreciated. We have another Phoebe, which doesn't always happen. I'm sure, Phoebe, you are aware of. So hello. <laughs> this is a special moment. Um, okay. We will wait just a few more seconds, I think, and then get started. Good morning, everybody. Lovely. Okay. Okay, I think we will just get started. Um, if more people join, that's fine. Um, but yeah, let's just let's just crack on. Um, so welcome. Thank you so much for joining us today on our session, um, which will explore how to improve your website's return on investment. So before we get started, um, I know that some of you will know HDK, but to those of you who don't, we are a digital agency that provides website design and marketing services to arts and cultural organizations uh, for clients like the Arts Council England, the Bose Museum and Alexandra Palace. I am Phoebe, um, I'm HDK's client relationship manager. I am a white woman in her early thirties with uh, blonde hair, uh, which is tied up today. And I'm wearing a pale green jumper and my pronouns are she, her. Uh, today I am joined by Linus. Hi, I'm Linus. I'm a web support developer here at HDK. I am a white man in my early 30s and I have a moustache and I'm currently wearing a yellow jumper. Amazing. And off screen currently, but helping us today is also Leslie, our intern. So just a quick hi, Leslie. <laughs> Thank you for your support today. Um, so that is the team at HDK today. Minus. Um, so <laughs> hello um if um yes so let's get started so what we're going to explore in today's session um is firstly what is return on investment and how do you define what that looks like for your organization because i think that's one of the hardest parts of this conversation in the arts and culture um, what are the factors that contribute to a website's return on investment and how can we manage and influence these factors to improve the value that our website brings us? As always, we're going to have uh, a quick pause for a survey to gather your feedback on the session and then we will have time for questions at the end if anybody has any. If you'd like to post about the session today, please do so on social media. Uh, we are using the hashtag HDKWebinar. Uh, so feel free to use that if you do post. And also just a kind of, um, just want to preface this session by saying we are going to be sharing and talking through, I think, quite a lot of information relatively quickly. 
Um, don't worry about writing any of it down or screenshotting any of our slides. We're going to share the slides with you after the session. Um, so hopefully you can just focus on being present um, and yeah, we'll we'll do the rest of it. So uh, with all that said, um, let's get started. Have a quick sip of water. Okay. So what is website return on investment? So um, website ROI, that's my cat again, is uh, the value your website brings compared to the resources you put into it. Your return on investment basically tells you whether your website is worth the investment that you're putting in. So measuring it on an ongoing basis can help you review and improve the value your website brings your organization. But what is value? So return on investment is often measured in monetary terms, but, uh, and it is important to know the sales that your website is generating, particularly if you have an online shop or if you run events as an organization. But value can also be measured in non-monetary terms. Uh, it can be organizational awareness. It can be audience development. It can be engagement. There are all kinds of ways that you can measure value. So what is of most value to your organization? So before you begin to measure your website's return on investment, it's important to determine which factors represent the greatest value for your organization. So is it sales? Is it awareness? Is it audience development? Is it engagement? Or is it a combination of uh, some of some of those factors? So really, that should all come down to your organizational mission. So as an exercise, we are going to look at the mission statements of two hypothetical organizations. Um, and thank you to chat GPT for helping me generate these. It was very quick and easy. So um, yeah, I'm sure a lot of you are using it in similar ways. Um, so the first example is a producing theater in East London. So I'm gonna read out their mission statement now. So we are East London stage for global stories, weaving children's theatre into a tapestry of empathy and activism. Together, we empower young voices to shape a brighter political future. The second example is a digital gallery that showcases Northern artists. Their mission statement is, our digital gallery spotlights UK talent beyond London's glow. Join us in illuminating the world with the brilliance of Northern creativity. So let's take a look at the producing theatre first. So based on their mission statement, um, out of ticket sales, audience growth and engagement, which factors would you say are the most important and why? Um, please comment in the chat, uh, have another read of their mission statement on the left um, and have a think about whether sales, audience growth or engagement are the most important. And we'll just pause um, to allow you to do that. Okay, so we've got engagement has come up a few times, awareness has come up as well, possibly all of them, yeah. I think um, because, so let's just reread their mission. So we're East London stage for global stories, weaving children's theatre into a tap tapestry of empathy and activism. It's hard to say tapestry and empathy, they're <laughs> close together. Together we empower young voices to shape a brighter political future. So um, audience development absolutely feels really important for this. In order to, um, you know, create a wider, the widest possible audience for these children's voices to be amplified, that definitely feels like that should be a priority for them. 
in order to do that, obviously they also need to get bums on seats. So um, yeah, Katie, absolutely sales are also important. Um, and yeah, I'd argue that all three of them are as well. Um, so let's, sorry, my, my sink is making a loud noise now. It's, it's a chaotic morning in my kitchen today. Um, so now let's have a look at the digital gallery. So I'll reread their mission. Um, if you could also let me know what you think is most important for them. So our digital gallery showcase, uh, spotlights UK talent beyond London's glow. Join us in illuminating the world with the brilliance of Northern creativity. So in my mind, this is a digital gallery and it's a website that has the art readily available on it. Um, so that might give you a hint. There's not, there's not any events that people will be going to. It's all online. So yeah, over to you. What do you think will be the most important uh, factors to measure for this one? Whether it's online sales, um, audience development or engagement? Yeah, definitely organizational awareness. Just wait for a couple more. Oh yeah, we have them, sorry. Engagement, audience development, absolutely. So I think in my mind, audience development, awareness, uh, those are probably the most important factors. Of course, engagement, we want people to um, interact and hopefully uh, continue their um, you know, journey with the gallery. Um, sales are probably less important unless they have an online shop. Uh, it's not as though they have anything to sell uh, that stands out. Um, so yeah, absolutely. Audience development and engagement would be uh, the most important factors for that organization. So for each of those organization, um, measuring the factors that we've pulled out uh, will help them understand how much their website is supporting their overall mission. And that really is what return on investment should come down to. Um, so the same applies to each of your organizations. Um, so very quickly, a question again for you. What metrics would you say are important to your organization based on your mission? And it'd be great to also uh, have a very quick explanation of why. So if it's sales, is it because you have events? Um, is it audience development and why is that? Um, so yeah, if you could just take a moment to share the metrics that you think are most important to you and why. If you'd prefer to chat, put that in the chat, great. If you'd prefer to raise your hand, uh, please do so. Um, and we can we can get you talking, but um, yeah, in, entirely down to you. Um, while you're doing that, um, let's just have a think about HDKs. So HDK, as I said, we're a digital agency and we partner with arts, cultural, heritage and non-profit organizations like all of the ones that are here today. Um, and a lot of a lot of our kind of aims as an agency are really just to connect with as many but as targeted individuals as possible from the kinds of organizations that we want to work with. Um, and on our website, you know, um, there are absolutely actions that we want people to take, but it, and you know, we have our webinars, but they're free. So, you know, for some of you might be running events that won't be as important for HDK. So um, yeah, Linus, what would you say are the most important metrics for HDK to measure for our return on investment? I think one thing that always interests me is the uh, is just the amount of users we get on given project pages because mm -hmm. I feel like that that can that can always tell us where where we should maybe be focusing our energy. I guess when it just comes with connecting, it comes to connecting with arts organisations. Uh, I feel like the number of participants in a webinar like this is always a good metric. Mm -hmm. And we can kind of see using those that using that metric of the number of participants, uh, we can always see what the industry is more interested in. And then we can kind of uh, A, make more content like that, mm -hmm. uh, but also 
kind of steer our clients if we're building websites for them towards towards the same kind of content yeah yeah I hadn't considered that actually I think it's um looking at things like our project pages where we talk about the work that we've done and the clients we've worked with if there are two for example that have like such higher views than the others then maybe that's because uh, those kinds of organizations are coming to us and maybe we should think about other ways that we can connect with them so yeah there's so many kind of creative ways that you can apply metrics and kind of maximize the value that your website offers so I'm going to have a quick look at what people are saying um so Phoebe has said awareness and engagement are most important to them because they do sector advocacy and have a membership. So um, absolutely, that those two metrics match up perfectly with those priorities. Kasha is saying brand awareness and sales. Um, Emma, oh, my scroll is being funny. Emma is saying sales leads and donation slash revenue primarily alongside awareness and engagement for the advocacy work we do. Uh, Christina audience development so reaching new audiences and sales as a free to enter organization absolutely um, all because the uh, Katie is saying all because we are a children's theater company and charity um, so profit uh, all would benefit us Catherine sales and new audiences we have a mission to increase diversity but not sure how we measure if we are successful with this regarding website audiences that's a very good uh, kind of point to raise as well as to how you um if there's a way that you can measure that um Shona all good Shona no worries thank you very much for letting us know um I hope I hope you enjoy the recording later Chris uh users visits views and engagement always seem to be good metrics to track as high numbers in those areas tend to lead to good outcomes for our goals absolutely so I think uh what what seems to be the case is that a combination of metrics is the best way to determine the value that your website brings. And um, yeah, what those metrics are will really depend on what your organizational offering are and what your mission is. So uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you for the interaction there. So um, with that, we're now going to have a look at the various factors on a website that contribute to your uh, return on investment. And I'll hand over to Linus for that. Thank you so much, Phoebe. And yeah, there's some real good metrics there. I'm going to actually touch on a few of them now. Uh, maybe not all of them. Oh. But I'm so sorry. Can you hear me? Who do you want to message? Ignore me. Hi. I'm, I'm going to assume everyone can hear me. Great. Cool. All right. So there are many factors that contribute to website return on investments. And I'm going to briefly touch on a few of them. And then Phoebe and I are going to pick four or five of them and we're going to delve a little deeper into them. So first up is user experience and or UX design. So a well-designed website enhances user satisfaction, leading to increased user engagement pretty simple really if you have a nice to use website people will use that website uh, content quality so high quality uh, relevant content attracts and retains visitors which boosts seo rankings and uh, conversion rates and speaking of seo optimizing website content and structure will improve visibility on search engines which will drive organic traffic and as a result uh just increase your website ROI. Mobile responsiveness is the next thing on the list there. So with the rise of mobile browsing, you need to be able to ensure that it's a seamless experience across uh, multiple devices. Uh, and this enhances user engagement and conversion rates. And you know, there's nothing worse than a, than a poorly optimized mobile experience, in my humble opinion anyway. Uh, site speed. So... Uh, fast loading pages reduces bounce rates and improves user experience. Uh, this contributes to higher ROI through increased conversions. So that's definitely something uh, I'm going to touch on that a little bit more later. But next thing would be social media integration. So you need to be able to leverage social media platforms to drive traffic, engage users and kind of foster a uh, brand advocacy and this is positively going to impact your ROI. E-commerce functionality, obviously, 
this is uh, this is quite important. So for e-commerce websites, you need to streamline the purchasing process, kind of limit the number of clicks needed for ticket sales, maybe, and uh, obviously providing a secure payment options can boost sales. You know, uh, CMS systems or content content management systems. Uh, a user friendly CMS will simplify content updates and maintenance, and this is just going to save your team more time essentially, so they can do do more uh, in less time. And then finally, uh, customer support integrations. So if you provide accessible customer support options. Uh, this will absolutely enhance user satisfaction. It's going to lead to increased audience retention and therefore a higher return on investment for your website. Now, try to keep these factors in mind when attempting to increase your own website's ROI. Like I promised, we're going to touch on a few of these now. Uh, I'll hand you back over to, uh, to Phoebe and she can uh, go into a little bit more detail on a couple of those. Thank you. Yeah. So, um, so we've had an overview of the different factors that can contribute to uh, the value that your website can bring. But we're now just going to take a look at a handful of those factors and how we can manipulate them to improve the value. So the first um, and one of the most important factors is user experience. Um, and user experience or UX can be measured through a number of key performance indicators. I've got these on the screen, um, but I'll also just run through them. Um, so this is things like engaged sessions per user, average engagement time per session, and engagement rate uh, to measure engagement, uh, conversions and conversion rate, uh, the number of clicks in a booking or purchase path, um, or how long it takes to carry out a combination of tasks on your website. So if you have events that people can buy tickets for, if you have an online shop, if you have memberships that people can sign up for, how long does it take for them to do all three of those things? And can they do that within the same transaction or do they have to do all of them individually? All of these things um, are how you can measure your user experience. And what those metrics, as we've discovered, will uh, really depend on the various functions of your website, the integrations you have, uh, such as a CRM or ticketing platform. Um, but there are some universal methods that you can call on to review your website user experience. So the first is user testing. So of course, data is something that we all measure um, and it can tell you a lot, but real world interaction and feedback can be incredibly valuable, especially when it comes to user experience. So to gather feedback, um, you can appoint a focus group of people who represent your key target audiences and run a user testing exercise. And this can be as simple if you know if you're low resourced um, as sending out a survey to your mailing list with uh, a small incentive to encourage them to complete it. Or um, if you have a bit more time and you want to go a bit more in depth you can invite a user group into your space and uh, give them a set time uh, to carry out some tasks and then have a workshop with them to identify areas to improve your user experience. Another way uh, to review user experience and improve um, your uh, website return is audience role playing. So this is where uh, you set aside some time to experience the website from the perspective of your target audiences, or if you use them, your audience segments, and note the different ways that your user experience can be improved. So for example, let's say that you have experienced seekers and frontline families as two key audiences. Um, of course, they will have very different needs. Um, so have a go at moving through the website as an experienced seeker, have a go at moving through the website as a frontline family, what is it that they're looking for? How easy was it to find? How many clicks does that journey take from start to finish? How clear were the calls to action? And was there anything frustrating about the experience that you could improve? All of these questions are ways that you can kind of gather learnings from your audience role play to then improve the user experience of your website. Finally, um, another method of reviewing the UX is A-B testing. 
So for anyone who doesn't know, A-B testing is where you take a specific page of your website and vary factors on the page, such as visual design, content and calls to action. So different users see a different version of, of the page to find the elements that generate the best results. So at the end of the testing period, the idea is that you will roll out a single page with the highest performing combination of elements, which in theory should boost uh, the results from your website. So if you work with a digital partner, let them know that that is something that you'd like to explore. Uh, let them know that you'd like to do some A-B testing um, or get in touch with HDK if you work with us, uh, we'd love to hear from you. Um, an example of this, we recently worked with uh, industry leading dance uh, company Rumbear to redesign their online dance platform, Rumbear Plus. They did some A-B testing of a specific landing page and as a result saw a 16% increase in membership signups. So that is a very clear example of how improving website user experience can contribute to a better return on investment. So the next factor that contributes to your website ROI is content. So as we covered, uh, the metrics to measure the success of your content will, of course, depend on your goals. Uh, so if awareness is important, you might want to measure things like users, new users and sessions. If it's engagement, um, engage sessions per user, etc. cetera. Um, and if sales, then conversions and conversion rate. Either way, uh, breaking down each of these metrics will tell you what about your website content needs your attention most. So as um, an example, we're going to have a look at some data and pull out some key observations and what, what the data might tell us about the website's content. So also bear in mind, the figures on this are very low. So there's like 100 users in January. Um, this is just for simplicity and clarity of ideas so that we don't have to do too much mental arithmetic as we go through this. So uh, firstly, let's look at the users. So the audience is growing quite steadily, which is nice, uh, great from an audience awareness perspective. But if we look at um, engaged sessions per user and engagement rate, those are actually decreasing which tells us that the website content here is not successfully engaging these new people who are visiting your website. So what can we do about this? Um, things that we can do to mitigate this are reviewing your content marketing. So the new users that are coming to your website, are they the right target audiences for your organization? Because That might be where you're going wrong. It could also be the quality of the content on your website. Um, it also could be that, you know, you might have made some content changes between January and February and March, and they might be impacting your website performance. If nothing has changed, maybe you could just look at making some improvements to your content to see if that can increase engagement. So what kind of improvements can you make to your content? So tweaking website copy to make it more concise and interesting, updating your visuals to create a more stimulating user experience or adding suggested content to pages to encourage users to continue exploring your website beyond the first interaction they came here to carry out. Finally, oh, uh, wrong, <laughs> wrong uh, action. Finally, let's look at the uh, conversions and conversion rate. So there's a very slight increase, but it's not proportionate to the increase in audience. Um, so in this scenario, you might want to, um, da, 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 da. in this scenario, sorry, you want to review the ways that your content is funneling users through your website towards sales. So obviously sales will look different for everybody. So if you offer memberships, how can you better communicate their value? If you sell products, is the photography as good as it can be? Are the item descriptions engaging? Or if you sell event tickets, is it clear enough what people can expect from the experience? Does it sound exciting? Does your marketing copy need tweaking? Um, so we've had a question from Catherine. Uh, so I just want to answer this before we continue. So how do you suggest measuring engagement rate? So engagement rate is something that is offered by Google Analytics, uh, which is super helpful. Um, I'm not sure if you have Google Analytics set up on your website, um, but it's, once you're in, you can and 
you know, people like Linus are incredibly skilled at using Google Analytics. I'm less skilled, but uh, GA4 is much more user friendly. You can just search uh, once you're in there, things like engagement rate for January, and it will just come up with a figure, which is brilliant. So unlike social media, you don't have to calculate it yourself. It is a metric that's readily available if you have Google Analytics set up. Um, so yeah, highly recommend uh, getting that if, if not. So establishing uh, the right metrics um, and collecting data and actioning learnings from the data are all key to improving your website content and of course, supporting an increase in return on investment. Next, I'll hand over to Linus. Thank you so much, Phoebe. And just Catherine, just to touch on what Phoebe said a little bit there. Uh, the last webinar we did actually touched on some of the AI features of Google Analytics, and they're very they're very easy to use. Uh, so if you've got any questions, do go back and maybe maybe watch uh, that webinar as well. Uh, but yeah, thank you, Phoebe. Very cool. Uh, I would argue that the best place to start with improving ROI is with the SEO or search engine optimization. Uh, I would apologize for all the acronyms that I'm about to spew out, but there's too many of them and it wouldn't be genuine. Uh, so managing SEO effectively involves a combination of strategic planning and monitoring essentially. And these are a few of the key steps to manage uh, SEO for optimal ROI or return on investment. First of all, keyword research. So this is probably where you should always start when it comes to SEO. So you need to conduct thorough keyword research in order to identify relevant search terms that your target audience is using. So focus on long tail keywords that have a lower competition, but a higher conversion potential. Now there are tools that will help you with uh, with this. So tools like a Google Keyword Planner, uh, SEMrush, or Ahrefs uh, can assist in this process. On-page optimization. So make sure that you optimize on-page elements, such as titles, meta descriptions, headings, and content to align with your uh, chosen target keywords and provide uh, valuable information to users. So ensure that your website structure is logical and easy to navigate, not just for users, but also for uh, search engine crawlers. Uh, local SEO optimization. So if your organization operates in a specific geographical locations, uh, optimize your website traffic for local search. So this includes claiming and optimizing you know, your Google My Business listing. Uh, you should also maybe be obtaining local citations from other businesses and encourage uh, sort of local customer reviews as well. Uh, technical SEO. So ensure that your website is uh, technically optimized for search engines. So this includes things like optimizing site speed, which I'm gonna to touch on a little bit more in a few minutes, uh, but you should also be fixing broken links, improving mobile responsiveness, uh, implementing structured data markup uh, and creating XML sitemaps. And you kind of need to regularly monitor and fix uh, technical issues because as technology evolves, uh, some integrations will stop working. So you always need to kind of keep on top of these things. And finally, for SEO, monitor it and use Google Analytics. So use tools like Google Analytics and Google Search Console to monitor your website's performance. You know, track those key metrics, such as organic traffic, uh, keyword rankings and conversions, and then analyze this data that you get from Google Analytics to identify areas for improvement and adjust your SEO strategy accordingly. So you could think about stuff like which one of your pages get the most hits and see what it is about those pages that people like and maybe try and bring that to other, other parts of your website. Uh, and so to by implementing these strategies and consistently monitoring and refining your SEO efforts, you'll absolutely increase your website's ROI. Uh, as promised, I'm going to touch on site speed a little bit now. 
uh, managing site speed effectively is absolutely crucial to optimizing the ROI on your website. A faster website not only enhances the user experience, uh, like Phoebe touched on, but it also positively impacts search engine rankings, conversion rates, and overall performance of your website. And these are just a few things that you should be thinking about uh, when it comes to site speed. So first of all, perform an audit. Start by conducting a comprehensive performance audit of your website using tools like Google PageSpeed Insights, GT Metrics, or Pingdom. Uh, these, uh, these tools analyze various aspects of your site's performance, and they'll even provide recommendations for improvement. One of these things that I would absolutely improve would be images. So large image files can significantly slow down your website. So if you optimize these images by compressing them uh, or you know, using appropriate file formats like JPEG for photographs or PNGs for graphics, and maybe even implementing lazy loading to defer images that aren't showed on the screen, just defer the loading for them. Uh, so that's gonna absolutely increase the site speed. You could also upgrade your hosting. So you could improve server response times by optimizing A, server configurations, but also maybe upgrade your hosting plan. Uh, and you could also be using content delivery networks or CDNs to distribute content geographically closer to your users. Next thing would be minimize redirects. So excessive redirects can increase load times by requiring additional HTTP requests and server responses. So if you minimize the use of redirects uh, and just essentially ensure that they're using, they're being implemented uh, efficiently. And finally, uh, monitor and test regularly. So you need to continuously monitor your website's performance using the tools that I mentioned before. So it's Google Site Speed Insights, uh, Pingdom, uh, and as TB touched on before, you can also conduct A-B testing to evaluate the impact of uh, performance optimizations or user engagement and conversion rates. So maybe you just decide to optimize all your images and then kind of measure if you get more, if you get more user engagement doing that. So sort of by implementing these strategies and continuously optimizing your website's performance, you'll improve site speed, you'll enhance user experience, and ultimately achieve a better return on investment for your website. Uh, yeah, over to you again, Phoebe. Thank you very much. So uh, we're going to, if anybody has any questions, we're going to open up to those in a moment. Um, but for now, we are going to ask if you could please um, take a couple of minutes just to complete our survey. We're going to pause for two to three minutes. Um, Leslie has kindly shared the link in the chat. Um, so if you could take a moment to do that now, um, I'm going to mute myself. I'll give you two to three minutes. But when you're finished, if you would comment done in the chat, we'll get a sense of when we can when we can crack on. So I'll just mute myself now to leave you to do that. Oh, good, Owen. Thank you very much. Mm. 
Amazing. Thank you, Sinead and Georgie. Um, I'm just going to hold on uh, for a few more and then we will crack on. Fabulous. Thank you so much. Um, okay. Great. All right, then. Um, so hopefully that's most of you. Um, if you're still finishing, please uh, continue. Um, but in the meantime, um, we are going to allow time for questions. Uh, if anybody has any, please feel free to comment in the chat. Um, if not, we will we will move on to sharing some exciting news about upcoming webinars. Um, but yeah, I'll just hold on again to see if anybody has any questions on anything that we've covered today or anything that you're kind of currently not sure about when it comes to your website return on investment. Um, feel free to ask anything. I'll hold on for probably about 30 seconds, but if we don't have any questions then, oh, we do, great. Um, let's see, I wonder if this is a Linus question. <laughs> Can you see the question from Chris Linus? I can indeed, thank you, Chris. Uh, yeah, GT metrics is, is a good tool for site performance. Yes, absolutely. Uh, I mean, there are, I mean, Pingdom is free. Right. So you're not going to. I guess, you know, the more data you have, sort of the more aware you are. So I would if if a you have the budget, but step, like I said, Pingdom is free. I would I would use more than one tool if I was in your position, Chris. But GT metrics is, is, is a fine tool. I suppose different tools might also give you different metrics. So I, it really depends what kind of metrics you're looking to measure when it comes to the site. Abs absolutely, absolutely, Phoebe. Mm -hmm. um, so Catherine has asked, um, can you advise on if you have an audience development goal, how you find out if you are reaching the new audiences you are targeting in terms of profile and demographics? Um, that is such an interesting question, and I think something that um, there are there are a number of ways. I think it is a bit more difficult because it's not necessarily something that is always tracked. I know that um, what some I can't remember the organisation, but somebody that we've worked with, they had a pop up survey um, that was just a very quick, uh, you know, like a pop up that came up on their website. And it asked them probably like two to three questions to get a sense of which audience they were from. Um, and that was a really good way of them gathering very specific audience data that told them, um, you know, which kind of audience segments are visiting their website. Um, so, yeah, that's one way that I can think of. Um, I don't know if you have any suggestions on that one, Linus. Yeah sure that you have enhanced measurement turned on in GA4 if that's something that you that you use and there's another setting that I can't remember just off the top of my head now but essentially Google Analytics will track uh, demographics for you so that will be gender that will be age that will be sort of geographical location so I would just make sure that your GA4 is properly set up and that it's actually collecting all of this data Fab, thank you. So yeah, a couple of ways there. Um, okay, I think we'll move on now. If if we have any more questions before we finish, we'll obviously answer them. Um, but thank you very much uh, to those of you who, everyone who, who's interacted today, it's been really great. Um, so let's, um, I'm just gonna let you know about our next three webinars, um, as I'm sure um, some of you will already know. HDK run uh, a different free webinar every single month uh, on different digital marketing topics. 
They're all targeted to people working in arts, culture, nonprofit, and heritage to make it as relevant as possible to you guys. Uh, the next thing we're going to be looking at, uh, which is which we're really excited for, is going viral. So the psychology of trends. We're going to be looking at that in April. In May, we're going to look at how to maintain your website's accessibility. So we've done a couple of historic sessions on how to make your website more accessible, uh, getting it up to speed with, um, you know, today's accessibility standards. But how do we maintain that on a regular basis and what measures can we take? Um, you know, regularly to ensure that our websites are still accessible. Um, in June, we're going to be looking at reducing your website's carbon footprint. Um, so two, in May and June, two very kind of core organisational uh, things that we're going to be looking at. So um, Leslie has shared links to the webinars uh, in the chat. Uh, so feel free to sign up to any and all that are of interest to you. Um, and as I said, we have the full program for 2024 on our website now. We also have a quarterly newsletter. So we send that every three months uh, and it's full of useful marketing tips um, and industry insights. Uh, we also include things that we've been working on. So you can kind of get some inspiration from your peers in the industry. Um, and of course, just nice little updates from the HDK team. So if you're interested in receiving that, do sign up. Um, also get in touch if you're interested in uh, working with HDK on your website, uh, on design or marketing. Uh, we're at hello at wearehdk.com. Um, so that is that is all for today. Um, thank you, everybody, for joining us.